Joe, what is EAB or what does that stand for? EAB is emerald ash borer. It's an insect that uh, is killing ash trees throughout much of the eastern U.S., slowly working its way west. It came to the U.S. in the mid to late 1990s in the Detroit, Michigan area. And from there, it gradually spread. It, and they didn't figure out it was there or what was causing problems with their ash trees until 2002. It, it damages them initially and eventually will kill them. What does an ash tree look like? So if people have it in their yard, what they, can they know in order to identify it? Okay, well, there's two things that people should know. First is that ash is opposite. That is the branches come across opposite from each other. Uh, you can see it on this one. On this one, you might notice there used to be a branch here, it broke off, so it's a, a little tricky. So the branches come off opposite of each other, the leaves come off opposite of each other, but the leaves are compound leaves. This is a compound leaf, not a simple leaf. And a compound leaf has multiple leaflets. And the way you tell a compound leaf versus a simple leaf is where's the bud? The bud is at the base of the leaf overall. Most of the things that are opposite with compound leaves will be ash. What does emerald ash borer damage look like on their trees? Okay, on the overall tree, if you're looking at the big picture, it'll start with some dieback from the top. The insects like to feed near the top first and then gradually work their way down. So the larvae of emerald ash borer, the little caterpillars, they feed under the bark. And what they do is they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Serpentine, it's clearly back and forth in their feeding as they develop. This tree was hit by lots and lots of emerald ash borers. So early on in the infestation, when there's just one or two in the tree, we'll see this. Later on, we'll see galleries, feeding galleries going everywhere. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that this girdles the tree, so the top uh, gets starved of water and nutrients from the soil. So then the roots get starved of the sugar that's coming down from the leaves. So it's, a, it's kind of both the top and the bottom get starved in different ways. What do the um, adults and also the larvae look like? Okay, the adults are a metallic green. I've never actually seen one. I've, just, I've seen little samples in a vial, and, but I've never actually seen one. Usually the metallic green insects that I see are the six-spotted tiger beetle you might be familiar with. Very pretty, very pretty and some uh, metallic wood borers. Uh, so I've never actually seen the adult of emerald ash borer. The larvae are kind of a creamy white segmented. They've got these bell-shaped segments and uh, that's one thing that's really distinct about them is that bell shape. Because again, some of these native borers look a little bit similar. And the other key identifier for the larvae for EAB, are they have these two little prongs sticking out the backside. They're called urogomphi, technically, uh, and they're only on EAB. You don't see them on our native ash borers that might look similar. How do the emerald ash borers travel or spread? You know, the adults can fly, generally maybe they fly about a half a mile. They could fly up to 10 miles. Generally it's firewood, firewood or pallet wood. Uh, sometimes if the bark is still on the wood, that can cause problems. That can transport insects hundreds of miles. Buy it where you burn it. I, I, I love that phrase. Uh, it's very simple and straightforward because even out here on the prairie, there's enough trees that, that there, are firewood, there is firewood available from local vendors. So if people have ash in their wood pile, they could actually be harboring. They could. Uh, up to two years, I believe, is how long it could take uh, the insect to develop under the bark. Uh, the other part is, if it, with a piece of firewood, it is gradually drying out. But uh, if it's fresh firewood, yes, there could be an insect under there. If people have a beautiful ash tree and they really want to save it, is there anything that they can do? Sure, sure. There are a couple of insecticide options. Uh, varying, there's a lot of details here, varying effectiveness, uh, varying cost. One is called imidacloprid, very common, incredibly common. Uh, you can buy it at most garden centers or it can be applied professionally. 
That one's very simple. You mix it up according to the directions, apply it at the base of the tree, let the tree take it up. And that is pretty effective. It's, it's not the best, but it's, it's pretty good. And homeowners can do it, and it's fairly inexpensive. There's one related to that called Dinotefuran that can also be applied to the soil, but actually that one is often applied as a bark spray. And uh, it, gets, it moves a lot quicker. It gets absorbed through the bark, moves a lot quicker to the top of the tree. Uh, otherwise, it works pretty similar to the imidacloprid. The third one has the active ingredient called emamectin benzoate. And that one can only be applied by professionals. And that one is applied as an injection into the stem. Now that one is very effective, 99 plus percent effective at killing EAB adults and some of the larvae. So uh, it might be worth your while. And the prices, because of competition, have come down. The emamectin benzoate also has a two-year residual. The imidacloprid, the dinotefuran, really are only a one-year residual. You have to treat every year. Where can people go or what can they do if they need more information on EAB? Uh, for more information, I'd say go to your State Department of Agriculture website or the State Department of Forestry. And it's a little different in North Dakota versus Minnesota versus South Dakota. Uh, in North Dakota, we have the, state, the North Dakota Forest Service. In Minnesota, you have the Minnesota DNR Forestry Division. And in South Dakota, the forestry program is actually part of the State Department of Agriculture. I would also recommend uh, the Extension Office, either in your county if you have one, or in your state uh, at the regional level.